The Lincoln Scent is the longest tenured coin in the history of the United States Mint, and it's still going strong today. However, the first year of issue in 1909 did not go as the U.S. Mint planned. There was an aspect of this new design that the public absolutely hated, and the result was a special one-year-only design that has gone down as one of the most iconic in the history of the United States Mint. This is the 1909 Lincoln Scent with the Victor David Brenner initials on the back by the wheat stalks in NGC certified MS65 red brown condition. I mean, look how stunning this is. You could see the, the initials with a naked eye at the bottom of the coin, VDB across the bottom, under those wheat ears right in, wheat ears right in the center. Those are the designer's initials. Record caused a huge uproar in the public. They were forced to remove it because they say you're not supposed to put your initials on a coin. Here is a great graphic. Now this shows you where to look and what the initials look like. You could see it very clearly on the uh, feed we just showed you, but this is a graphic that shows you where to look and what they'll look like. That first year, the mintage figure of the VDB version before they changed it over to the corrected version without the designer's initials shows that the VDBs are much rarer. Just under 28 million were made which sounds like a big number, but to compare that to with the number of corrected 1909s made, you're looking at just about 73 million without the designer's initials. Yes, now you see the reason the designer's initials such a big problem was the public at the time, this is the first time you're ever getting the iconic Lincoln wheat scent. And they love Lincoln still today. He's one of our nation's most iconic presidents. But back in 1909, he was a lot closer to them than we are today. And as a result, many were offended that an artist who created the coin could dare put his initials on the same coin as the iconic Honest Abe. The result was they changed the design quickly one year later, making this a one-year only issue. And when you look at population reports today, they are astronomically rare in MS-65 red-brown condition. As of today, NGC has certified just 7,327 total coins. And that may sound like a lot, but when you compare it to the almost 28 million they struck, that breaks down to one in every 3,821 coins exists in this greater better with the rare VDB initials. That is less than one-tenth of a percent. The actual number is 0.02 percent. It is astronomically rare. It is one of the more unique coins in U.S. Mint history, and many experts argue over whether or not it's in fact a variety or an error coin. Because while the Mint did make this on purpose, many would argue it was one of their biggest blunders in their history. I mean, we think about other quote-unquote blunders, the 1883 no-cent nickel, uh, maybe the t 1913 Type 1 Buffalo, the uh, Micro S and the Mercury Dime series, the Bugs Bunny and the Franklin. The Godless Dollars that we got yes. with the... Uh, There's many across the United States history that we can bring up as uh, examples that are similar, but this one is the first year of issue in the Lincoln Cent program, 1909, with the initials. Now, you'll notice it's certified as a 65 red-brown by NGC. Of course, they designate it with the VDB on the label as well. Look how gorgeous that scent is. It is a red-brown, which means it's got a lot of red detail in it. Scents, copper scents are graded in color as well as quality and eye appeal. So you have a red brown as well as a Mint State 65. Yeah, to find a Lincoln wheat scent from 1909, from 114 years ago, in NGC 65 red brown is astronomical. When we can find this coin with our competition, they had a heavily tarnished coin that I'm sure met the technical grade of MS 65. But let me tell you, you could barely even make out the individual pieces of the wheat stalks on the back. But they still wanted $175 for that coin. We are significantly less at just $139.95. And all of our coins are certified by NGC to be in stunning MS65 condition for $35 less than our nearest competitors. You want to know a kicker about the whole VDB fiasco? What many collectors didn't know is the U.S. Mint actually snuck his initials back into the coin right. many years later. Yeah. In fact, it was about nine years later in 1918, they snuck the VDB initials up onto the obverse shoulder of Honest Abe. So despite all of the fanfare around <laughs> having those initials, the Mint still thought it was a good idea to put them back. back. And just like, hey, the VDB is back. Hey, one in every 3,821 
of these 1909 VDB cents or in this high grade 65 red brown or better. Tonight with us here at AVC 139.95, savings of $35 off our competition. It's all about the VDB, the first year of issue, one of the coins that created such a stir uh, in the public. So join us, folks, grab yours. 9051027 is the item number. Again, that website just popped up. It's avccoins.com. Anytime the phones are busy or you're on hold or, hey, you want to shop 24-7 outside of the show, we want you here with us. But you can shop online anytime at avccoins.com. Now, one of the more unique stories about the 1909 VDB cent, one of the biggest mistakes in U.S. Mint history in regards to choosing their design, it actually was a mistake that almost never should have happened. That's because Victor David Brenner was not the first choice to make the iconic Lincoln Wheat cent. That actually went to the premier sculptor in U.S. Mint history, who, Allie? Oh, Mr. Gaudens, yes. Augustus St. Gaudens. Unfortunately, Augustus passed away in 1907, and despite having several designs that he was actively working on, they didn't believe that they were any level of quality to be sent to the U.S. Mint. So a few years later, Victor David Brenner would submit his design, it would be selected, they'd throw his initials on there, and create one of the biggest U.S. Mint mistakes this side of the godless dollar. Absolutely. I love this coin. It's, such a, it's a one year only, very small mintage, very small population in addition to that. The second coin in that Roosevelt coin renaissance that started in 1904 when Roosevelt wrote that letter to the United States Secretary saying that the state of our coinage is atrocious and hideous and we need to redesign them to be beautiful just like our American people. This is the second coin in that program followed by the Buffalo Nickel and then of course we all know the Mercury Dime the Standing Liberty Quarter, the Walking Liberty Half, et cetera. But how about this one? It's the 1909 VDB with the designer's initials. We do have to put a one minute clock up at this point, folks. Thank you for calling and joining us on this one. There are a few hand, uh, about a handful or so left, so pick up the phone, call us right now. If you're online, process that checkout immediately. Do not, do not miss out. Now, when it comes to collecting, one thing always holds true. First and last always are premium coins in any series. And when you're talking about the longest tenured coin series in the history of the United States Mint, the Lincoln Cent, it's hard to go wrong with this first year of issue, one year only of issue with this rare design because they corrected it that same year, the 1909 VDB Cent that started it all. Over 114 years of Lincoln Cent history was kicked off with this one coin, and we are more than $35 less than our nearest competition for a stunning MS-65 red-brown grade issue. When was the last time you've ever even seen a cherry red cent in your pocket chain? Since they took copper out of them, I know it hasn't been a long time. 